Welcome back friends. Today I want to help my students solving biology questions and for the sake of today I will be solving the nectar questions in the past paper of 19 I mean of 2019 biology one so I'm starting with paper one then I will go with other papers kwa hiyo nia na lengo bado ni kuwasaidia kujua jinsi gani naweza mkafanya vizuri kwenye masomo yenu sasa sijaweza kuonyesha hapa maswali but I will be leading them and as I told you most of time join my telegram group kwa hiyo there nita share hii past paper in pdf form for those who are there they can get it now let us start with the session a session a has 70 marks as usual answer all question in this session each question carries 10 marks now in question 1 you are given a diagram you are given a diagram and let me try to show you this diagram as you see here in my pc the diagram here now in this diagram you are asked different questions and the first question here is question the question 1a which ask you to name name the structure now according to this diagram this is nucleus some of students i know they wrongly and they they said it's it's maybe cell instead of, of nucleus why i said so because of the diagram which is seen it is seen as as if it is more similar to the structure of the cell and that's why i have said that some of the students could say that it see it see it is cell and not nucleus now this is nucleus as you can see here there is nuclear pore there are nuclear pores labeled as labeled as w then there is Nucleolus labeled as U, we have nucleoplasm labeled as V, and then we have nuclear membranes labeled as X. Now, as you are asked to to label the structures, that's why I showed you the labeling of the structures here. This is the diagram of the of the nucleus in my notes so as you can see here this in in our diagram in the exam they have showed just only ending with this membrane so this love on the plasmic reticulum is not shown in your diagram so we have nuclear pole here this one or this one or this one all be the nuclear poles and then we have ribosomes bonded in the half endoplasmic reticulum, but for the sake of our diagram, it's not there. Now the Loman 2 question identify the parts labeled U, V, W, and X. U is nucleoplasm. U. I mean U is nucleolus. Nucleolus, then V is nucleoplasm, that is cytoplasm of nucleus, then W is nuclear pole, nuclear pole, and X is nuclear envelope. So that's over about labeling. Then what is the rule? What he rule? 
does each part labeled u v x play so they want the rule of u then v and x so u is where the genetic material is concentrated dna so simply it is where the dna or hereditary material they are carried then v is where the DNA replication takes place because you nucleolus is where there is just only condensation of the DNA and since it is condensed it can't replicate so DNA in you it is condensed it can't replicate but DNA in V means it has undergone unfolding so it is able to replicate it is not condensed is that in you and then finally the structure labeled x is a nuclear membrane which play a role in in protecting the nucleus and isolating it as we discussed earlier but the functions of the membranes rounding the organelles so as you can see here that in most of the notes of teachers, they don't explain directly about the functions of these parts. But what they explain or what they light can give you a light for what to write in your exam. So if you know most of teachers, the exact answer is that, for example, a nucleolus found within nucleus, spherical body, which is dark stringed, there may be one or two nucleoli within the nucleus. It is composed of DNA and RNA which makes it to strain intensely. So com being composed of DNA and RNA means it is the part which carries genetic material. It is the part of nucleus which carries genetic material and they are condensed. That's why they strain intensely. And about the other parts like V and X. V can act as a site of DNA replication, V, nucleoplasm, site of DNA replication, also the site of transcription, that is conversion from DNA to messenger RNA, takes place in V, that is nucleoplasm. And X, as I told you, about protection. Now, let's go on to the question A, B, enumerate four rules played D with the structure presented by figure one. Figure one is nucleus. And the four rules of the nucleus, I hope, I hope most of, of us will know about the rules of nucleus. But for the sake of being the same line, let me just, just repeat them. Firstly, nucleus it carries genetic material and therefore transmitted from one generation to another. Second, it controls metabolic activities of the cell. Third, formation of ribosomal RNA by nucleolus. Ribosomal RNA by nucleolus. So you can see the function of nucleolus, formation of ribosomal RNA. But it also, it involves in nuclear division, which gives rise to cell division, hence reproduction. It carries information for synthesis of protein in the nuclear DNA. So that's all about the function of nucleus. And that's all about the question number one. Question number two, they asked about the procedure for testing non reducing sugar in a given solution. Now here this is seen as the practical question, but is it is the theory question. And as you know about the procedures of testing non reducing sugar. Uh, in testing non-reducing sugar, you should know one thing that if it is non-reducing, being non-reducing means it have some bonds, and the presence of bonds it inhibit the release of the electrons by the sugar and then cause it to be non-reducing. So, firstly, in testing non-reducing sugars, some of the last stages, they become similar with those 
when we are testing reducing sugar. Kwa hiyo tunatumia ile ile solution Benedict solution. We use Benedict solution. Lakini kabla tujaenda kutumia Benedict solution lazima kwanza tuvunje bonds in the reducing sugar. And in breaking these bonds we are first adding HCl hydrochloric acid. Then we boil after boiling we cool after cooling we neutralize the HCl with the sodium hydroxide. After neutralizing HCl with sodium hydroxide, now we are adding Benedict solution and then we boil again. So, all in all, I don't remember about the volumes of solutions. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you had the first one cm, we had two cm cube of the test solution, then one cm cube of HCl, you boil, then you cool. Then you add one cm cube or equal volume of sodium hydroxide. That is, equal volume means the volume of sodium hydroxide should be equal to the volume of the HCl. That is one cm cube. And then you you come to add two cm cube of Benedict solution. But what I wanted to explain to you is that you are just connecting or you are just explaining the procedures as in the in the practical. So. Then at the end for this question, it's better if you say what will you observe and then interpretation of what have you observed. So sometimes the question like this, they have not tell you to, to, to explain about the observation and the inference of what you have observed, but it's better if you write them because in exam we always say that if you write many things, it's better rather than the one who wrote few things then got few marks and about question b they asked you about analyze the chemical composition of the following foods lipids and then proteins if they ask you about the chemical composition means they want elements elements so lipids they they are always of carbon they are made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen but in lipids the proportion of hydrogen is high as compared to carbohydrate but for here because we have not given carbohydrate so you can't say as compared to carbohydrate but you can just say that the proportion of hydrogens in lipids is high but it is composed of carbon hydrogen and oxygen in proteins it is composed of carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and sometimes some of the elements like sulfur they can be present in the proteins. Some of the metals, they can be incorporated into proteins, but mostly they are not pure proteins, but they are, they are some of the derived proteins, such as heme, which have incorporated iron. And so you should not consider all of those elements, but you are just considering the common elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. And then, about question number three, they asked you about to identify the lowest taxon. So for your level from six, lowest taxon is species. Lowest taxon is species. Then illustrate taxonomic helix of human being. So here, what they want is you to tell them from the kingdom, phylum, then class, until to the speech so it is somewhat it is somewhat tough question because it, it might it, it might be easier if you have read it and kama sasa hivi hapo umesoma unaenda kwa mtihani utakuwa kumbuka lakini out of that i always kukumbuka most of books they have written this and for me i have no direct answers i just tell you go and read it that's what I can tell you. I, I have no direct answer. I'm not remembering everything. So I can say Kingdom Animalia, maybe Phylum Codata, maybe Class, I mean Phylum, Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Codata, maybe Class Mammalian. But in between, I don't remember. I just know genus Homo than Species Sapiens. So just you can, you can find the family and order 
in the books or in the text but if you don't find them you can just comment down then or even myself i can put it in the description and about question b question 3 b roman 1 they asked you about why classification of organism is needed give three points so this is very easy a question just the importance of classification and for the sake of this question i don't think if there is n of the form 6 student cannot understand about the importance of classification of the organisms because it might be like a form one question and even in form 5 you are taught again but i think it's very easy for you to tackle this question so i can say that you you have a solution to this question and one thing you should understand here is that i am not here just to give you direct answers but i am here just to tell you how to answer the questions what detail can you tell your teacher so that can give you a lot of marks so that's all question 3b roman 2 analyze three difference between natural and artificial system of classification and for this question it's just similar to the form one question so you are just tabulating them you're just tabulating artificial and natural classification then you're just writing answers question 4a identify four main types of receptor and state the rules of each so in types of receptor you have different classifications there is classification of receptor in which you classify as primary secondary and etc and there is classification of receptors basing on the uh, types of stimuli maybe uh, photoreceptors for light chemoreceptors for chemicals and for the sake of this question they want the classification of receptors based on the stimulus they receive classification of receptors based on stimulus so i hope everybody of you knows about these facts and that's why i've told you that here you don't have direct answers but i can tell you how to answer them i know they are in bs and there it is where they are written clear i don't i don't believe mandias and pamphlet like that because even in my my time of studies i didn't use those so just prefer bs prefer understanding biology in the book theory that and then describe the effect of the following factors in transmission of nerve impulse here they have asked you about the axon diameter and the myelin sheath now for this question i can say that it is explanatory question and to some extent you should draw what is happening so for example in axon diameter we say that the smaller the axon diameter the higher the resistance now you can explain this in fact that axon diameter diameter of the axon is inversely proportional to the resistance is inversely proportional to the resistance and this is the concept coming from the electric current that is the resistance is inversely proportional to the area and if the diameter is increasing means the area will also increase so if the diameter increases and the area is also increasing resistance is always inversely proportional to the cross sectional area of the conductor so axon is is acting like a conductor axon is acting like a conductor as long as the diameter of the axon increases the resistance of the conductor decreases so if the resistance of the conductor decreases that allows the formation of the longer local local circuits for the conduction of the nerve impulse within within this axon so axon diameter in explanation you can say that the greater the axon diameter then the higher the rate of conduction or speed of conduction of nerve impulse because here they want you to explain how they affect how how they affect in my sheath we say that 
my united sheath, my united action, conduct never impasse faster than none my united action. And this is because of the sartatal conduction. I am just explaining as easier, but you should explain more in a, in a BS. They have explained it very good and very detailed, and they have drawn a diagram looking the, like this. Then they have they have drawn my earring sheath. After that, they have explained about the sartatal conduction of the nerve impasse. That the nerve impasse saltea, saltatal conduction means it is by jumping. It saltea from one place to another. And that's what makes the, the myonated axon to conduct nerve impasse faster. So sometimes you can ask me why nerve impasse doesn't pass here. Because here in the myonated action here there is fat and this fat increases the resistance so here conduction of the electricity cannot happen because of the resistance provided by the fat in the myelin sheath but here where there is no in the node of lanvier where there is no fat here it is where the conduction of electricity can take place that's why a local circuit they are formed from here to here at the points of the nodes of Lanville. So, for this video, let me end up here. Then I will proceed with the question number five in the next video. Stay with me, subscribe my channel, join my Telegram group for more and more detail. Thank you.